are talking about the spiritist conduct regarding the sick. So I'm going to do my best to recap what we talked about so far. So skipping the part that I tell you to go to the spiritist magazine. Okay. So this book is called Spiritist Conduct. Is this book here? New comments. Oh, it's okay, Liza. It's the uh it's it's just technology. There was something going on with the mic, but that's okay. I will go back to the beginning. It looks like it's working now. We fixed what's going on, we find the resources and we press on, right? So this, this talk today or this conversation is not really a, a conversation. It's based on this book. It's called Conduta Spirita or Spiritist Conduct. It was translated and revised by the SSVA team, which I was part of. And it has 47 chapters. It's a Spiritist Conduct regarding the media, our parents, the spiritist center, our mentors, passes, mediumship, the sick nature, the homeland, you name it. This is really how you and I should be behaving in everyday life. This is a book by uh, the Spirit Brazilian Spiritist Federation, translated, revised, given to them. Hopefully it will be published in the English language sometime soon. But until then... You can go to the Spiritist magazine. Many of the issues will have one article from that, one chapter from that book. So until we can get to the whole book in English, you can read the articles there. And because we are go going through many difficulties through the pandemic, we have chosen an article from issue um, 50, which is Spiritism during the pandemic. The whole issue 50 is about things related to the pandemic. And this article is titled Spiritist Conduct Regarding the Sick. So Andrea Louise will talk. There is a very short, there are short chap chapters, beautifully written, and there's always, always a, a Bible quote in the end. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning and talk to you about these different chapters as you can see here on the topic. So Andrea Louise will say, Create around those who are sick a positive, trusting atmosphere for prayers, vibrations, loving words, strength, and optimism. Are you sick yourself, or do you know someone who is sick? And if you are, this is what you can do. You may not be able to go there and fix them, or there may not be medicine for curing. There may be no way for us to get better, but this is what you can do positive trusting atmosphere do you go visit someone in a hospital some hospitals are still allowing visitors when you get there focus on this loving vibration enter the place of the hospital the building the physical building pray as you enter ask permission to be there that building has someone taking care of it in the spiritual realm the vibrations and loving words you can't go visit them they're far away they're in a nursing home rehab they are um, not receiving visitors for some reason. This is what you can do. You can have prayers for them. Even when now we can meet personally to do passes, we can do passes at a distance. We can do spiritual treatment at a distance. So whenever you are in a hospital or around the sick, sometimes we're sick at home, we don't necessarily need to be going to hospitals. This is our job. We create this atmosphere because this atmosphere will attract good spirits that will be around us, helping us, allowing us to physically be, be feel better, spiritually feel better. He will say the work of rehabilitating the body is based on the rehabilitation of the spirit. So ultimately, dear friends, I, I invite you to go to the book Fought in Life by Emmanuel. There are chapters about illnesses there and health. And there's also um, this study on the, of the book Evolution into Worlds, whereas Andrea Louise will teach us 
that our minds, the minds of the spirit, will act upon the perispiritual body. And as you know, the perispiritual body is connected molecule to molecule to our bodies. And then the action of our thoughts will be uh, com commanding the activity of the perispirit that ultimately commands the activity of the physical body. Ultimately, the, all illnesses have their roots on the spirit. He says, even if you're linked closely by the heart, do not allow yourself to be discouraged when faced with those who are sick. Meaning, if even if the sick ones are your loved ones, friends, family members, co-workers, rather bestow on them elevated sentiments and faith, avoiding exhortations of pity and sadness, despair is an invisible fire. So when we are with people who are sick, it's very difficult to see someone who you love sick. It's difficult to be sick, but as a spiritual being incarnated on the earth, at some point you and I are going to be sick, right? It's not only we, we may not be sick, but our physical body is going to break down that will lead to our discarnation in the future. So as our changes, and if you are ill, feeling ill, we want to bestow upon people sentiments and faith, elevated sentiments. We want to be optimistic. We want to be trusted. We want to have faith in divine providence. The divine providence will provide for our healing. You may not be cured, but it may be healing. And there may be many types of diseases. We have spiritual diseases mental diseases, mental illnesses, and also diseases of the physical body. The diseases of the physical body are more self-explanatory. We want to get rid of it. But sometimes there will be things that you and I will be experiencing that are necessary for our growth. He says despair is an invisible fire. So when we bestow upon people elevated sentiments and we don't fall into the trap of sadness and despair and pity, self-pity, oh poor me, why me, we lose an opportunity for optimism and for hope that this will be for our improvement. What else Emmanuel says? Whenever necessary, address the role that pain has on our pathway without any unhappy lamentations. All right, let me make sure I'm still live. Looks like I am. Resignation derives from truth. And of course, guys, if you stop listening to me for some reason, please let me know. And here you have, we have that pain has a role. Pain can move our spiritual progress. Pain can accelerate, accelerate our progress. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy, no. But we can shift the way we see pain. And we can help our loved ones, remember the elevated sentiments and faith, to start seeing pain as an aid to our spiritual growth, more than just um, a hard thing that we have to do. Good. I'm getting some feedback that it sounds okay. That's great. Thank you. What else? It says, under no circumstance promise cures or establish a timeline for the complete healing of the sick in particular to those who are obsessed. Otherwise, you may risk incurring thoughtlessness. Above all, follow the wise will of the sublime father. Sublime father. Friends, sometimes you and I may be in the spiritual center with our family members and friends, and we are commiserating with, with people. We are, you know, seeing they're distraught. We are seeing them in pain. Yet, we shouldn't promise cures. These are the words of Andrea Louise. Above all, only God knows what's best for us. We don't know if someone is supposed to be cured, supposed to be healing, and especially we don't want to tell them, yes, if you do X, Y, and Z, within three months, you're going to be better. Maybe in the physical medicine, the medicine that we have on the earth right now, the nursing treatments we have on the earth now, you can say you take this antibiotic for seven days and you're going to get better. However, we shouldn't promise cures because above all, only God can tell. We should pray for the cure. We should pray most likely for the strength to undergo the difficulties, for the inspiration of the loving spirits. 
to be with us, to be with them when they're sick, to be with all of those on the earth right now who are in a hospital, who are in a nursing home, who are in a rehab center. That that can be so, we can be of so much help. Remember in the beginning, he said thoughts, vibrations. We can, we see a message or we see a news or we see an article talking about what's happening in hospitals. We can visualize the good spirits traveling through the halls of the hospital, inspiring the nurses, inspiring the therapists, inspiring the chaplains, inspiring the cleaning people, inspiring the physicians, inspiring the the um, the physicians and the administrators who take care of all of that, so that we can all, each and every place, with, with the resources that you and I have, even at a distance, we can have a positive impact on those who are sick but never promise cures. That's very interesting for us to take um, a note of. He says, pay attention to and be affectionate towards anguished and suffering hearts without speaking or acting in any way to humiliate them with your positions and or your convictions, seeking to tend to their physical and moral needs within your available resources. The effective improvement of the soul is rooted in perfect solidarity. Here we have, I think that's where I uh, last stopped. Pay attention to and be affectionate towards anguish and suffering hearts. Those who are sick may have anguish and suffering hearts. If we haven't switched the way we see our perspective in pain and illnesses, we may be anguished and suffering. It's not easy to go through a physical difficulty, a physical illness, or a mental illness or psychological illnesses. Then we don't speak to them in a way to humiliate them with our own convictions and our own moral values. You and I have free will as much as everybody else on the earth in both realms of life, in the physical and the spiritual realm. So when we make use of our free will in this life or in the previous life, and now we find ourselves in an unfortunate situation that leads us to have an anguish and suffering heart. The last thing you want is someone to judge you. So if you are a healthcare worker, pay attention to and be affectionate towards those who suffer. And go to the gospel. Go to the, the, um, the New Testament and then go to the gospel according to spiritism and go to the book Genesis where you have the explanations of the healings of Jesus. Read the book Jesus in the home and the book Good News and you're going to have an idea of how Jesus paid attention to people. He listened to them. He, sp he spoke up affectionately to them. They all asked uh, when they came to seek healing. They said, what do you want from me? Right? So we need to... Look for those clues on how to be by paying attention to people. So sometimes all they need is for us to pay attention to them. He says, seek with happiness in service of your own regeneration to live for prolonged periods of times with relatives or friends that are suffering disabilities, mental instabilities, or stubborn illnesses. The antidote to evil is persevering in the good. This is very interesting of Andrea Luis. He says, seek with happiness to be with people who have an illness for a prolonged period of time. Who wants to be ill for a prolonged period of time? Not many of us, right? Although we know that as we get to be old, we may be ill for a period of time. And if we want to go through an easier process of separating the molecules of the perispirit through, um, from the molecules of the spirit, the physical body, as we age, the detachment occurs. And if we're less attached to matter and then our discarnation is easier, we may be thinking about a way where we are for a long period of time, we're sick. He says, seek with happiness for our own regeneration. So when if we are faced with a relative that is suffering from disability, mental instabilities, or stubborn illnesses, we should seek to live with them instead of withdrawing from them. Because a lot of the times those disabilities, mental instabilities, or illnesses can teach us a lot. Remember, pain, let's look, let's shift the way you and I 
can see, see and experience pain. Persevering in the good is the antidote to evil, which evil is nothing more than ignorance, the ignorance of God's laws and the no, not fulfillment, fulfillment of God's laws. Part three of the Spirit's book is to be evil. Nobody is intrinsically evil. We choose to act in a way that is not good. So we need to persevere in the good and be, you can imagine here that we'll be experiencing pain, Suffering, disability, it teaches us patience, it teaches tolerance, it teaches us to be compassionate and empathetic towards others. And imagine if we are the ones who suffer from the disability, the mental instability, or, or the stubborn illnesses, we would like people not to run away from us, do unto others what we would like them to do unto us, ultimately. And the Bible quote here, let me remove my writing, is... Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. That's found in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. Dear friends, I hope that these humble studies of this chapter, I invite you to go and download the app, as that was said in the beginning, and I do have some time. I'm going to show you again. You can download the app for your devices. And you can choose from any of these issues you see here. All of those squares are one of the issues of the Spiritist magazine. They are normally published every three to four months. And the good spirits are guiding the works of the, the editors, the writers, the hosts. And then if you click here, if you choose one, you will then download it. This is the one that we're talking about today, Spiritist in the Pandemic. And then as you go through, you can read each and every article. So I'm going to work as well here because of the glare of the computer. And if you, this is for adults, this is for you and I, this is for who are ill, these are for those who are well, in the, even for children. At the end of the Spiritist magazine, you have stories for children as well. So this is something that, is for everybody and we carry these devices where we go there's also you can also download it on your phone you can order the pdf of the magazine you can order the physical copy of the magazine and then you can nourish your soul that way all right dear friends so what are we gonna do now we're gonna pray we're gonna pray because when we pray we connect with the good spirits. And when we connect with the good spirits, we can help everyone around us. And we want to pray tonight because we're talking about spiritist conduct regarding the sick. We're going to try to emulate some of those tips and tricks, very practical tips and tricks for our day, where you and I are going to pray for the sick in both realms of life, from all the diseases can afflict the physical body on the earth and the spiritual body on the earth. So we can imprint in our spiritual environment those thoughts and good vibrations. Remember to have your water with you. The spirits can infuse it with molecules that will allow us for our healing. And when we pray, a collective prayer, we want to make one petition and we can augment the power of our prayer by praying together, meaning when someone is praying, we repeat the words of their prayer. If it's safe for you to do so, I'm going to recommend that you close your eyes. You can pray with your eyes open, you can pray, and you should pray everywhere doing anything. But if you can take a few moments to pray, we can have those moments where we focus the attention inwardly and we stop a few minutes to pray. Shall we pray? Dear Mother, Father God, we thank you 
for the blessed opportunity of being together tonight, for the blessed teachings that Andrea Louise has brought to us. We thank him and all of the good spirits that care and that care for us each and every day, that dedicate their lives to helping those who are sick. We thank you, dear Lord, for the blessed opportunity of being in this reincarnation. And we pray that we can feel your love and your kindness in our lives. Dear God, we pray for those who are ill, those who are experiencing any kind of sickness of the body, of the mind, of the soul. We pray for those who are sick in hospitals, who are sick at their homes, in nursing homes, rehabilitation hospitals. We pray for those who are in psychiatric institutions suffering from mental illnesses. Dear God, we pray for the presence of the good spirits with them, helping them with love and kindness, inspiring them to be hopeful and have faith in your divine will. We pray for the spirit nurses, physicians, and all kinds of therapists who may visit our homes if we're sick and may travel the halls of hospitals and any institutions who care for the sick, inspiring those in the physical realm towards better diagnosis and treatments, inspiring them to persevere and being caring and loving, discouraging them from judgment and humiliation. Dear God, we pray that all of those who are sick can feel the love that streams from divine providence and reach the depths of all of us that care for us each and every day of our lives. Dear God, we pray for all of those who are in charge of caring for us in both realms of life, who visualize hospitals, outposts, areas of healing and regeneration, both in the physical and the spiritual realm. And as we visualize the healing environment that surrounds us, we pray, dear God, that we are worthy of your help and that we can connect with you and with the good spirits to hear their inspiration, to inspire us towards serving one another, be it in the physical way or in the spiritual way. Dear God, we pray that if we are sick, we can withstand the difficulties of illnesses and we pray that we are able and willing to apply the teachings we have received tonight in our daily lives to help all of those who come our way. Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for inspiring the writers and editors of the magazine so that we can be blessed and honored to be here tonight. With your permission, with your protection, we end our studies today. And so be it. Dear friends, thank you so very much for being with me. We're all learning something new. We are all learning to be t uh, patient and tolerant. And I'll trim this up later so that you can only have the part that actually has sound. Thank you so very much for being with me. I see here Stephanie. Thank you for being here. Sarah, Lisa Tellis, thank you for being here tonight. And all of those who didn't say their names, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be with you. And when I see you again, it will be 2021, we'll be discussing um, topics from Leon Denis. And I hope that you have a blessed night, a blessed day. Many, many wishes for you and your family that you may stay healthy. That if you're ill, that you are, um, you improve.
quickly and let us all use the tips and tricks of Andrea Louise so we can be of service to all around us. Stick around because our dear friend Karo Correa will come after us and she will talk about the divine laws of the Spirit's book. And until I can see you again next, next week, I wish you many, many blessings, dear friend. Take care.